and welcome. My name is George Schlackig and this is The One. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and if you're watching this, I hope you've got a drone. Well, whether you got it for Christmas or you've had it for a while, this video might be important. Let's talk about flyaways. This seems to come up a lot when you talk to people who aren't necessarily into flying drones seriously themselves, but perhaps bought one for their son or daughter at some point, which then flew away never to be seen again. Most of those drones, I'm assuming, are small toy drones that wouldn't necessarily cause a whole lot of damage if they came down in the wrong place. But boy, do I have a story for you. When I first got curious about drones, I didn't know enough about them to know the difference between the good ones, the not so good ones, and the toys. I mean, look on Amazon and search drones. Page after page of really cheap drones pop up that all look more or less the same. That's because they're all knockoffs. <laughs> I bought a holy stone that was relatively cheap and definitely not the latest model, so I thought this had to be a sweet deal. I had fun learning how to fly that thing and a bit of frustration too when I couldn't control it the way I had imagined. Then one cold January morning, I headed out to the other side of town on my bicycle. I knew where the river ice had a really unique texture and the plan was to go there and get some low flying footage of that. I thought I had familiarized myself enough with the drone and what its limitations were, but I didn't remember there being a specified temperature range. It was about minus 15 degrees Celsius that morning and it never even dawned on me that this might be too cold. I also had just one battery, but it was supposed to give me about 22 minutes of flying time. You may already know that those supposed flying times are never accurate, so this was probably more like 15 minutes in a real life situation. Maybe even less in cold weather. 15 minutes is nothing when you have a mission and the drone won't cooperate due to some brisk wind. The red light for the low battery started flashing and I just about brought the drone down next to me. Then it hit me. I could just squeeze a few more seconds of flying time out of the battery with the lights flashing and get that exact shot that I was after. It was successful, or so I thought. I managed to bring the drone down a few meters away from me, next to a little bridge. All I had to do is walk over and pick it up. Being inexperienced as I was, I made the stupid decision to turn off the controller and put it down on the bench while the drone was still powered on. I'll never forget what happened next. Before I could reach it, the drone took off on its own. Unless you've experienced a similar incident, it will be hard to imagine what that felt like. I ran back to the bench where I had left the controller, turned it back on and tried regaining control of the drone. It didn't work. All I could do was just stand there and stare at the waning spot in the sky that was moving erratically further and further away. Okay, this is kind of disappointing now what happened. I lost the drone. What happened was uh, I was flying it. I actually landed it right there. And uh, I figured, oh, I still got battery left to go for another few minutes or so. And uh, I was trying to get out there where that ice is and I think I actually got some really nice footage of it but then I lost the connection to the drone and it came down right over there where my finger is pointing and as I was trying to retrieve it from there I was uh, walking across this little bridge here you see that 
Yeah, and as I'm on that bridge, the drone takes off. Horror scenarios of the 600 gram drone crashing into people or causing a traffic accident went through my head. What followed was a wild chase across a wide area to locate it, but I never found it and eventually gave up. Well, I'm at the point where I have very little hope of finding this drone, even though I have really only looked in a small area. But I can't access uh, all of the areas and uh, obviously I can't fly above here and uh, scan the area from the air. I hadn't heard of any horror stories on the news, so at least I wasn't liable for any disasters. Then six months later, a friend of a friend found my drone on a roof while working on someone's house in the area. Amazingly, it's found its way back to me. This mishap made me realize that drones are aircraft, not toys. It was the lesson I needed to take drone safety seriously. I'll never forget the worry about where the drone might come down and what damage it could do, not to mention the possibility of a collision with a manned aircraft. Thankfully, none of that happened. But it was after that incident that I first found out about the need to get a drone license. I also learned about what to do in the event of a flyaway. It's worth sharing for two reasons. Number one, it may prevent someone from getting hurt. And number two, it might someone spare the scary moments I experienced when my drone took off out of control. The first and most important step in dealing with the possibility of a flyaway is prevention. Make sure your drone is in top condition. You might want to create a simple checklist for that and go through it before taking off. Here's a tip. Your checklist could be on an app on your phone. Here in Canada we have the Drone Pilot Canada app which has all the checklists you'll ever need. It could be very basic and still cover all the important aspects when it comes to potential flyaways. Now a few basics. Number one, check drone for physical signs of potential failure. Are the propellers free of damage and securely attached? Number two, are all add-ons like prop guards and landing gear, for example, securely attached? Three, are the batteries in both the drone and the controller sufficiently charged for the operation? Four, are the GPS and the MIU properly calibrated and free of error codes or warnings? Number five, are the firmware versions of the controller and the drone properly matched? Please help me out in the comment section if you think I forgot something important here. Update your home point. It goes without saying that you should land your drone when the battery is critically low, especially when it's cold outside. You already cut the risk of a flyaway significantly just by following those few steps. However, it could still happen and you need to be prepared when it does. Here in Canada, the CAR require you to have written procedures you can follow just in case. Before taking off, you should be aware of your nearest aerodromes and their contact info, as well as any aviation emergency numbers. In Canada, this would be 1-877-992-6853. Should you lose control of the drone, here are a few steps to follow. Try to regain control by adjusting the position of the antennas, moving closer to the drone, restarting the controller, or restarting your app. Note the location, direction, and speed of the drone, as well as approximate battery life remaining. If the drone is headed toward an aerodrome, make sure you contact them immediately to warn about the potential danger to aircraft. Is there an imminent threat to aviation and or public safety? 
call the aviation emergency number. If possible, warn people in the potential crash zone. Finally, recover the drone once it lands or crashes. Determine the cause of failure and fix it. And also keep a record of the corrective maintenance that was done. Flyaways are rare when flying a quality drone, but they're not impossible. Hopefully, it'll never happen to you, but having some awareness of what you can do if it does greatly reduces the risks associated. Drones are awesome, and by taking some precautions, they're quite safe too, allowing thousands of us to enjoy them for recreation and use them in our businesses. They've truly opened up possibilities we could only have dreamed of just a decade or so ago. Well, happy flying everyone, but first you might want to click the like button. You can support my channel further by subscribing and if you're rich, donating like via Super Thanks or the Buy Me A Coffee link below. You may also order your next drone through one of my Amazon affiliate links. I'd be getting a small commission and you'd be getting a drone you can trust. I'll see you soon.